Yo, what's going on? Let's cook with me, Charles. It is your boy, sick. So we're gonna do butter squash. One, two, three, four potatoes. Four potatoes. One, one onion. Uh, we're gonna need two tins of coconut milk. Two, you can do the light version if you like, but I've gone with the full fat version, because you know. And then we're gonna need granulated garlic or garlic powder if you have it. And then we're gonna have some ginger. I buy everything in bulk, so that's why it's in big containers. Uh, also, we're gonna need a bit of the good old flavor. Some people don't even know what that is, but that's okay, that's okay. We work with it. And um, we also might need a little bit of black pepper, just to add a little bit of spice. It's not gonna be spicy, but this is made so that you can customize it. This is gonna have some chicken on top of it, but I wanted to show you guys the kind of vegan version so you can kind of add whatever meats you want with it. I'd go with a bit of white meat, kind of chicken, pork. Stay away from beef because it's a bit of a it's a bit of a sticky one still when you put it in um, if you put beef and lamb in it. So Let's get these vegetables chopped. We're gonna dice um, the onions into very small pieces. We're gonna peel and uh, cube the potatoes, not too small. Uh, and we're going to make this the same size as the potatoes. So check it out. Bruv, I'm full on tearing up. Ooh. Right, I need, I, need, I need to get a tea towel. Pause on that. Oh. Right, sweet. Right, put that all in there. Get a second bowl. Second bowl. Get an expandable thing. Boom. That. Catch all the potato skins. Yeah, we're about to, uh, to peel. So, what we're gonna do is get these two plastic bowls, put the onion in there and making so we can put the potatoes and the squash in this bowl. So what we're gonna do is put that on the side first. And we're gonna make sure every, our workstation is pristine so we don't make an accident or make mistakes and end up chopping our own fingers off. So we're looking to get it so that when it's cooked, it's not too, it doesn't mush up too much. But so you're kind of looking at like one inch pieces. If that's small, I don't know. Make it, make it look like mine. If you're cooking along with me, it's pretty easy. So in half and then in half again. And then this is where you make the sizes, boom, and repeat. Ain't that hard. People need to know how to start cooking. You need to know the flavors. Experiment, this is the time where you have the time to be able to pursue your passion for cooking or do something different. Make content on the internet. Make people laugh, make people smile. This is the goal for me anyway. You know, ah, boom. So, once that's done, we can, we can move on to the squash. I've done that last because that's always fun. Because if some of you don't know, squash is much like a pumpkin, it contains a seedy part in the big thick old area right here 
So what we're gonna do is get a big spoon. Just put that there as I burp into the mic. Top quality content. Put that in the uh, good old to the bin. And then cut just about 75%. So as you can tell, it, that doesn't go all the way. So you just scoop it out much like that. But if it is quite a small squash like I've got here, it can go all the way to the middle, like as you can see there. So what you can do, is you can investigate how far that goes up. So it goes up a little bit, because that's an indication of it. It's a little bit old. I've probably had that squash for about two weeks now, waiting for a good cold snap to happen. And with the current climate that we're in, it's pretty good. Um, it doesn't really change the, the flavor of the stew at the end of the day, but it does make it a little bit bitty. So if you want to take that out, um, the way I approach, we'll get back to that. But for now, get out of the way. That too, back and put in the bin. The way I do it is cut it in half and with a big spoon. Um, do that. Try not, well, you can snap it, I guess, but it just means it makes it easier to, to scoop out if you do it all, all in one go. So, boom, in the bin. Make sure the seeds also go. You can like wash the seeds and I guess make it into like pumpkin seed, but, but I guess squash seed as so a snack. But no one's got time for that. Like, come on, honestly. Nice and tasty. Um, a squash is very kind of difficult to peel because once you start peeling it, like the, I guess the sap on the rind starts exuding and it makes it a lot slippier than like a potato. But handle with care and you'll be fine. I believe in you, the universe believes in you, you're watching this video for a reason and yeah you're gonna make a banging stew that you can go present to your mum or your partner or even yourself, present this to yourself and they're gonna be like damn G, I like your stew, that's what's happening so if you've, if I've still got you here so what I've done is diced small pieces, tiny pieces of our onion. So squash into little bit smaller pieces than the potato itself, because you want the potato to be the substance of carbs that you have as a texture. So now everything's prepared. Here's a tip, here's a, not a pro tip, because I'm not a pro, but if you put water, or submerge your squash and potato in water, the extra starch will seep out. And the next step, and the most important step, is the rice. So we're gonna move on to that, put everything in view. We're gonna move this, because we don't need that. We don't need that yet. We don't need that for now. So what we are going to do is find my secret rice compartment area located under the sink. I'm gonna have one put ASMR, but you can't see it. Well, there's content in it, so. so I put a mug, two mugs. There's already one in here. Two mugs of rice. That's enough for four people or for yourself for the next three days if you're doing meal prep. Um, so what I do is go to the sink, fill it up with water, all right? And here is the most important thing. And this is where I beef with people. You know, you know, on Amazon or like Argos or whatever you find appliances, rice cookers, Good rice cookers are probably like 45 pounds. Mine, I've had mine for about four, five years. 
since I went since I was at uni. And this has lasted me since then. So there's no excuse. This was like 15 pounds max from Argos. And your boys, my Caucasian friends, are out here cooking rice in these things. These things. Like, you know, like that isn't sufficient. You know, this 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 don't make good rice. Trust me. When I when it also triggers me. Where's where's that thing? Where is it? When people use sieves. Where the, where the I probably banned my sieve. There's my sieve. This bloody thing. If you're washing your rice in that, you're wasting so much water. See, I've left my rice. I've left my rice. Like, steeping. What you do is, it's, this is therapeutic. This is why it's most, you don't see Asian people going crazy because half the time they're just, they're just mesmerized by the amount of, amount of starch amount of it's calming it's meditation you see that see what how it's turning a cloudy color that's that's what you want you you need to dispose of that and repeat the process repeat the process until until you are seeing clear water so I'm at the sink, I'm still adding water to it, and it's getting clearer, and that's how you do it. You know, it's not that hard, and most people make it sound like it is hard. Some people do the, do the easy thing and just buy microwave rice for two minutes, you know, boil in the bag. But the amount of investment that you're giving yourself when you buy a rice cooker is just beyond measure. Any Asian friends that you have, they're going to be impressed. They're going to give you much more respect than you already have with them. If you go, hey, check it out, my rice cooker. And they're going to be like, oh, dang, this guy's serious. This guy's, this guy knows how to cook rice. I should stay friends with him, you know? Boom. See, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you're looking for, to level out the rice, give it a little bit of a jiggle, that's it. And then the first indent, it doesn't matter how small or big your hands are, the first indent of your knuckle, right? Touch the top of the rice. If it's the, if it's, if, if the line is on the line of the water, perfect. Perfect, right? Now what you want to do is you want to put that in the rice cooker. It's easy. It does it for you. It takes about 20 minutes. Put the, put the power on, put the lid on, leave it. Perfect fluffy rice. No pain, no stress. Sick. So we are moving on to the hob. Got a big pan, turn on the hob. If you have it, and I'm sure some people have it, coconut oil is the bomb diggity, and it will help with the flavor of, if you like coconuts, amazing. This will help with the flavor. If you don't like coconuts, avoid it. Use vegetable oil. Try and not, um, I'm not a fan of the olive oil, but if you have it, sick. Pretty big dollop, all that good essential oil is is coconut an essential oil I have no idea I'll have to, um, have to find out I'll have to google it or someone tell me in the comments put that in the sink ready to be washed once the coconut oil has melted oh look at that good shot back into place I'm gonna swirl it around and we're gonna get a spatula. Doesn't matter what kind of spatula you have, they're all the same, they all do the same thing. So with your onion in there, listen to that. Ooh. A 
ASM. Oh, gold. I'm gonna put this thing back on now, which is a pain. Fantastic. So, all that good stuff. Uh, you want that to really steam and let the water in the onion cook out. Not cook out, but leak out. Uh, probably keep it there for five minutes. Now that the onion is steaming, just on cue, literally just happened. Your rice will have just finished cooking. So you want to turn off that. And then I usually leave it a little bit ajar to let the steam out. And yeah, perfect. So, can opener, um, coconut milk. This is pretty self-explanatory. And then this is what it should look like. Creamy base. And let that simmer for about 10 minutes. And then I'll tell you what's next. So once that's been reducing, the, uh, the liquid should be slightly thicker than before. Um, then what you wanna do is get your um, your pot or your bowl of potatoes and squash take out some of the water you'll want some of the the water in there too to give it a bit more liquid to boil down um, and yeah give it a little bit more time it probably needs another half an hour or so to get down get up to temperature and soften the potatoes and the squash after 45 minutes to an hour uh, it should look like this it looks like a bit of a, a sloppy mess but trust me it is pretty good now at this point you want to taste it and uh, add your ginger which is this um, with these kind of containers you've got to be careful not to add too much because you don't want to have an overpowering taste of ginger um, but just a light sprinkling would do for now um, so what you want to do is mix that up I have as you can tell some broccoli on the side and in the oven we have some seasoned chicken grilling up so it shall all be plated when it's ready. Can't wait to present it. Um, yeah, season to taste whenever you're ready. Boom. That is a complete meal with Charles. That is, thank you for cooking alongside me. Um, check out all the other videos that I'll be doing and any suggestions on recipes that I should be trying next time, comment down below. And yeah, recipe is gonna be in the description down below also, but I'm glad that you liked the video. Share, like, and subscribe. And what have you got to say? 10 out of 10. Presentation might not be the best, but trust me, it is banging, especially in the winter season. Hope you guys enjoy. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Love you guys.